Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and college process. Once again, I'm Ed from Principia Prep. And once again, uh, like I mentioned before in my other videos, every Friday I'm gonna go into the comment section answering all the questions you guys leave here on the comment section. Now, once again, I'm gonna go past the comments as far as like good video and so on and stuff like that, or specific comments. I'm just gonna answer your questions here. So that's kind of the format we're gonna be doing every Friday going forward. So if you're new to the channel and watching this video here, if you want more information about the college process, or if you want your questions answered for the videos we have here on the channel, just put your questions on the videos here. And every Friday, I'll make this video here, post it on YouTube, answering all your questions. So then everyone has kind of a more detailed answer to all the questions you guys have out there. And of course, with that being said, let's jump right into today's questions here. First question down here by Devon Andrews here. So you can use the loan money for your own purposes besides using it for school. I'm assuming that your question is, can you take out more loan funds to be able to use for the books or transportation or laptops so on and so forth? The answer is yes. You can utilize a certain amount of loan funds that you send to the school, whatever private loan, state loan, or federal loan you take out. You can use part of that to help pay for certain aspects of the college process that aren't directly paid to the college. It's in the form of tuition or room board, that kind of stuff. Now, when it comes to the extra money you're given, you're only given a certain amount. So once again, I just posted the video last week. If you watch this video here, it will actually explain how the whole process works as far as the additional loan funds you can take out. As far as the extra amount they let you take out, based on you taking out a loan, okay? Let's go to the next question here, which comes in here from Nadia Watkins. Is it better to get a scholarship before high school, before senior year in high school is over? Sort of. Now, many of you may or may not know, there's actually three different types of scholarship money out there. There's the local scholarships, which are typically given out or basically distributed or helped out as far as the paperwork and getting your information out there by the guidance office of your high school. Those are the local scholarships like the Realtor, the local bank, the PTA, the Elks Club, so on and so forth. Those have the least amount of competition. Those you want to do before high school ends. Most of the time, these lists come out, usually around January, February, the local scholarship money comes out, which is what you want to be working on really in a January, February, March timeframe. Then the college scholarships, the second of the third, are the ones they're giving out just directly from the college, just based on you guys' In most of the cases, just filling out the applications for admissions and seeing if you're eligible for the scholarships. And the third level is the private scholarships, the stuff online like scholarships.com, Merit Aid, CapEx, all those, all those scholarship programs out there that we talked about in the past. These guys are the most competitive. These guys you can apply to basically any time. So basically of these three, your goal is to be applying to them as much as possible throughout the high school years. So you really want to kind of lock in your scholarship money, local, local college or private scholarship money before the student starts college, okay? So in that high school time frame. So then you say yes, before high school ends, you really wanna to try to lock in as much as possible. Go to the next question here, also from Nia here. I made an error on the social security number for the FAFSA. Is it better to correct the FAFSA? I would start by basically calling the FAFSA, okay? Here's the number here, the 800 number. I would call them up, let them know you have the wrong social on the form and see if they're gonna be able to allow you to fix it on the form or through the phone with them. Because if you're not, technically the social is the worst possible error you can make. And you would have to unfortunately start all over again, basically start the form all over again. Because the four major issues, the four, I guess, the worst red flags possible are first name, last name, social, and birthday. These are the four, if you get wrong, it just delays the process and just basically blows everything up. But the, of the four, the worst, worst, worst is making the social security number for the student. If the student's social is wrong, in many cases, unfortunately, they'll probably tell you this over the phone, you got to do the form all over again. Because the social is locked in once you submit to FAFSA. You can't change it, unfortunately. So everything else, the name, the address, the phone number, Everything else can change on the forms, but you can change the social. Let's go to the next question here. My son is in fifth grade. He's in the top 10 percentile, good New Jersey school. My goal for him are to graduate top college, maybe even Ivy, with minimal debt. Is it too early to learn about admissions and financial aid? It's really never too early um, in the sense of possibly building the track academically that he would need or the resume that that student would need to be able to get to the grad school level. As far as financial aid, it's vastly too early. Most financial aid can't really be kind of resolved or considered in any fashion other than maybe a year beforehand, really because of the fact that they use the prior prior system for financial aid. So they basically look at two years prior of tax information. So in fifth grade, unless you know what your income is going to be essentially in, let's call it seven years from now, almost eight years from now, it's almost impossible for the financial aid to be figured out, to be honest with you. As far as figuring out if they're generous or not, pretty much all Ivy League schools, most liberal arts schools, second tier underneath the Ivy League schools are almost all generous. So 
generosity wise from a need based perspective is already there it's very unlikely to change from uh, academic merit based scholarship potential it's almost non existent so if you're thinking i'm going to have a very bright student and get scholarship money at the ivy league level not going to happen it's virtually impossible unless they're an athlete in some cases rare cases it does happen but outside of that almost all the top tier schools are need based grant money so you would need to know ahead of time financially what your income would be and you'd have to in a weird way keep it artificially low to be able to get a ton of financial aid from them that's just kind of the way it works now as far as acceptance never too early you know do college tours meet the admissions reps this kind of stuff show demonstrated interest to kind of get the students interest peaked and also show the school long before the admissions process starts they're interested in going there so hopefully that helps you guys out with you know as far as admissions never too early financial aid unfortunately it's way too early to kind of figure that out Let's go to the next question here. Next question here is from Nisa here. How to go about paying the subsidized student loan interest? Now, if you are getting student loan interest right now, which no no one's getting federal student loan interest right now because all the loans are in forbearance right now, they're all at zero rate, so you wouldn't be having any interest anyways. But on the subsidized loan, if the student is still in school, there is no interest. The subsidized loan basically means it's interest-free while the student's in school until six months after the student graduates. So. Very likely, you might be talking about the unsubsidized portion of your federal loans, which if you go into studentaid.gov, type in your student's login information, once the dashboard pops up, you'll see exactly how much they owe in loans. And on the right-hand side of the dashboard, it's going to show you who your lender is. So you want to contact them and let them know you'd like to pay your unsubsidized interest that's already accrued. You can do that. But once again, there is no interest accruing on any federal loans, subsidized or unsubsidized the plus loans as well. None of them are, are accruing interest right now because of the federal student loan forbearance and the court stuff happening. Go to next questions here. Okay, let's see here. Question from Joy. Uh, you're always so thank helpful, thank you question. When talking to admissions for hopefully more scholarship money, does a scholarship need to be a high dollar amount or would percentage of cost be acceptable? How would you phrase certain things so on and so forth? Let me see what the rest of the questions details here, if it's a little longer. Okay, now when it comes to scholarship money, when you're appealing scholarship money directly from the college, they typically will not look at it from a percentage point of view. So to give you an example, let's say you have school A and school A costs 50,000. And that school A is where you want to go. And the school costs 50 grand, okay? And they give you a $20,000 scholarship. So essentially, this school gave you essentially if uh, 40% 40, 40 scholarship of the cost, okay? Cost 50, you guys will gain 20, that's 40% of the cost. If school B here, second school, let's say also cost 50, but they gave you a $30,000 scholarship or essentially 60% of the cost. You can't go back to school A and say, you know what, this school's meeting more of the percentage can you match their percentage? They're not gonna do it. They would consider though, if you said, you're giving us 20, the other school is giving us 30, would you be willing to match the 30, the number, specific number, to allow it to make it easier for us to attend your university? That is okay. Now, if you're considering financial aid as far as the sense of grants, as far as need, then percentages is a different consideration altogether. But when it comes to merit aid and scholarship money, it's basically just dealing with the numbers, not the percentages. Hopefully that helps answer your question here. Okay, let's go to the next question here. Let's see here. Question from Matt here, from Matthew. Thank you, love the short, direct explanations. Can you explain if you can use 529 money for off-campus housing? The answer is yes. 529 monies can be used for off-campus housing. It can be used for any consideration of college costs. So if you're living off-campus to be at that college, then yes, that money can be utilized. A certain percentage, not all of it, can be utilized to help pay for the college costs. Now, if you want to know what is kind of acceptable, two ways you can go. Number one, check with your financial advisor and your tax advisor. They'll let you know what percentage you can utilize of your 529 plan to help pay for the college costs for off-campus housing. Or number two, if you contact the school's financial aid office, ask them what is your cost of attendance for commuters? Because commuters and also residents both have a housing component for cost, which is part of the cost of attendance which can be utilized to basically utilize for use of off-campus housing. Those are basically the two places I would go to figure out what can we and can't we use from a tax perspective. Check with your financial advisor and your tax advisor, as well as the college to know what they're considering is the housing cost for a commuter student. Okay, so next question we have here from Audrey. My daughter was accepted to early decision school with 40,000 grants for 23-24. We are thinking of pausing our 401k contributions for the next few years to pay, pay, help pay for college. 
I know you said the schools can see our retirement contributions on box 12, W-2s. If that number goes to zero next year, what would happen? What would happen is this, basically. Whether you put money into retirement or not, by the way, every contribution you guys put into retirement every year is counted anyways. So the way I typically look at it, and of course, check with your financial advisor and figure out your own financial situation. But for me, if you are able to put money into retirement account, it does give you the tax benefit of not being used against you for tax purposes, federal taxes, so on and so forth, state, et cetera. From a tax perspective, it is beneficial. It also helps you increase your retirement assets so you have money aside when you guys do basically retire. So think of it this way. Whether you put in $10,000 into retirement every year or you don't, that year specifically that's used for financial aid purposes is going to count as income regardless. So whether you put it in there or don't put it in there, doesn't matter from a financial aid point of view, they're still going to use it in the financial equation to, choose, to show what you can pay towards the cost of college. So in my point of view, I typically say, if they're going to count it anyways, you might as well put it into retirement if you don't need it immediately because it helps grow your retirement fund. That's kind of the way I look at it. That being said, let's go to the next question here. Okay. If you get a big pen income tax check, college costs 30000 FAFSA college offers you 10000 off, student cost 20000 income. I'm not exactly sure what your question is. If you want to send this question again, but actually phrase it as a question, because I'm not sure exactly what you're asking me here for as far as a specific question. But once again, can if you want to ask me the question, I will answer it next week, okay? Because all I see here is a bunch of numbers. I'm not sure what your question is, unfortunately. But if you want to just send it again with a specific question, I can let you know, I guess, what you're looking for, okay? That being said, let me go to the next question here from two days ago here. If both parents are denied the Parent PLUS loan, are you only awarded a singular a singular amount of unsub loan? The answer is yes. So for those who don't know, if you apply for the Parent PLUS loan and you're denied, depending on the year your student is in, depending on the college credits they have, they will actually increase your student's unsubsidized loan between $4,000 to $5,000 of additional unsubsidized loan. But they'll only do it once. So regardless if one parent gets denied or both parents get denied, it doesn't matter. They're only going to give you the extra $4,000 or the extra $5,000 for the academic year in the unsubsidized, they won't double dip. So you can't, you can't both be denied and they get four and four or five and five. They're not going to do that. Unfortunately, they only give you one shot at it per academic year, by the way. Let me keep going down. Another question for Kenyon. Will this be ongoing for the 21-22 year? Oh, past it. Yes. For those who are wondering, this is the James Russo Memorial Scholarship or scholarship program we do here at our organization. Every year we give out scholarship money to seniors graduating, going off to college. And yes, we are going to be doing it again this year and hopefully the year after. I will be updating this video here about the James Wilson Moore Scholarship again, because I do have it on there, 21, 20, uh, 2021 school year, but we are doing it every year going forward, yes. Okay, next question here. If I am an independent student and I was working in high school, but not going to work as a freshman in college, would I qualify for full ride school? I'm not sure what your question is, but if you're an independent student, your income will count from the prior, prior year. So we're talking about this year's FAFSA for next academic year, 23, 24, you'll be using your 21 taxes. So if you worked in 21, whether you're working now in 22 or 23 or not, if you did have 21 taxes, they will count your tax information. So whatever tax you they want, if you work, whether you're working right now or not, they will go back and count that tax information to fill out the FAFSA form. Now you can do a financial appeal later on indicating you're not working now or you've been let go or unemployment, that kind of stuff, but you must utilize the tax year they ask for on the FAFSA form for the academic year you're going into. Then you can always appeal later on if you're not working at the time. Okay. Next question here. Is it possible, is it possible payments will resume in August without interest? Now, obviously this has to do with the student loan forbearance that's happening right now. It's highly unlikely to be honest with you, if this doesn't go through the courts as far as the student loan forgiveness of the 10,000 or 20,000, depending on your situation, it's highly unlikely that after August, they're going to push through again, another interest-free situation. Unfortunately, it's, it's very likely it's going to get to the end and we're done here. So right now we're all hoping that goes through, obviously, so we can get student loan forgiveness. doesn't affect me, by the way, I have no student loans, but I did back in the day, good, bad, or different. So I'm just hoping it does happen for everybody else who needs this, but I don't think they're going to do it again and push it as far as the student loan forgiveness again. I think there's just too many roadblocks right now that are being put up by different members of the 
political systems. I'm not going to get into the political side of it, but I think if you follow this, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. There's certain groups that just do not want to help out people with student loan forgiveness, no matter what the situation is, good, bad, or indifferent. So that being said, I think if it gets to August, it's done. It's it's not going to go through, unfortunately. So right now we're just waiting to see what the Supreme Court says. Hopefully it goes through and this gets resolved, but we're going to sit here and just wait to see what happens. Okay. Go to the next question here, or the last question here. Hi, Ed, could you please talk about the best way to borrow for medical school? My son's going to medical school in Florida, the tuition of 50000 cost of attendance 75 Now, when it comes to graduate school, I typically like to lean towards the federal loans. Grad plus loans are typically the way I like to go. If you are a parent in New Jersey, NJ class loan has very good rates right now. If you are a, a loan, if you are a parent in a different state, not New Jersey, then I would utilize and look to see if that state has state loans available because most of the state loans right now have the best rates, by the way, across the board. Then my third option would be looking at the private lenders, the Citizens Bank, Sally Mae, so on and so forth. But if you want, uh, every June, right around the end of June, I put out a list of the top lenders, top rates, so on and so forth. So if you want information about that, very simple, just email me, contact me here. At the end of every one of my videos is my email as well as my cell phone number, which I'll be at the end of this video here. You can just contact me and I'll send you the top list of the top lenders as far as who's got the best rates out there. Okay. Other than that, guys, thank you everyone for watching this video again. Once again, every Friday going forward, I will be posting all the questions you guys have with the answers or I guess detailed answers here that I give you guys explaining how everything works for your questions. Other than that, thank you for watching today's video. My name is Ed from Principia Prep. On the screen is my contact information. If you do need help, I do meet with parents one-on-one -on -one through Zoom. So if you need help, just shoot me a text or send me an email, and I'll be able to sit down with you and help you guys out with your college-related stuff. Other than that, thank you for watching today's video.